are you running? Why are you running? Let me do this one first. Sound rolling too. Clap. That's <laughs> what you normally do. It's just like a. <laughs> I don't normally do that, by the way. Hi. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? <laughs> How y'all doing? What's the drink of the day? Um, it's a mashup of Slam stuff. sip <laughs> with a hint of vinegar. <laughs> I'm so scared to try this thing. <laughs> Drink. I'll tell you what it is after. What about juice? No. <laughs> you left sip. You remember when I was sick? You gave me one like Motivita drink or something like that. <laughs> one like powder, water. So this looks like. I don't even know why like I just it? taste it. You like Not it? Really. Some some concoction. It's cucumber, juniper, with a bit of rum, some ginger. Cucumber, juniper, some rum, some ginger, and a hint of apple. So well, it's you, very you, refreshing. You grinded it. You ground it. Excuse me. Yeah. The, 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 oh, it's, oh, it comes like that. <laughs> What's wrong with you, babe? <laughs> <laughs> Is it alcohol? It? It's alcohol. Nice Rum, one. juniper, um, cucumber, apple, a little bit of lime. Just a refreshing, the light, a light drink, you know, something light, you know. Good evening, everyone. Hi there. Welcome to Why Are You Running? Do you like my hair? Love it. So today's episode, I said, don't, do, don't talk on. Can you talk. chew in, babe? What's wrong with you, babe? What's Can I live right my life? with you? Well, why would you be chewing on? Isn't it going to be? Is it going to mess up the sound? So now you are uh, Dr. Dre in the studio. <laughs> Shut up your mouth, you didn't. Just focus on what we're doing, please. Ultimate <laughs> engineer. All right, so <laughs> I'm yeah. watching an Hollywood movie today, which I've been doing a lot lately, by the way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it starred Pete Edochi, which, by the way, anytime you see me in a movie, just know either your sister is dying, your brother is dying, <laughs> the family is dissolved. <laughs> he's gonna leave guy, somebody just, in just the eff, house he's burning. Effing up your family. <laughs> Still all your money. Because he wants your money. So, so as usual. The the guy who ended up marrying his daughter, his mom, before he m met Peter Doce's daughter, he was dating Yoruba. He brought a Yoruba girl home, and if you he's Igbo, and he's Igbo, mm -hmm. but brought her to the village. She admired her. You know how they do that. <laughs> Loved her. And then, then he said, "What's her name? Where is she from?" <laughs> well, she's from Lagos. Edwin. Her name is Tokumbo. And the mom being a village woman didn't know she had just the only thing she knew about the word to come boys it's second hand. <laughs> we both people have used it, finished it, and sent it back to Africa. Later turns out this guy lived in America for 10 years. The woman said, ah, <laughs> So they've used you and turned you to Tokumbo. And it started it got us thinking about the tribal thing, which I hate that word. So let's use a different word. The nationality thing. Mm. You see, Nigeria, if you don't know, is made up of numerous quote unquote ethnic groups, which are really nationalities. You see, a place like Iceland doesn't have up to a million people. It is a country, it's a nation. But the Yoruba people number 50 million. And they are a tribe, very stupid. Igbo <laughs> people, 40 million. Tribe, very stupid. Hausa <laughs> people, 60 something million. Tribe, very stupid. Not to talk about the other smaller, smaller, smaller ones. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Which are still millions, right? Still millions. But we call them tribes. But we call them tribes. So anyway, the... Would you call them kingdoms then? Well, the kingdoms have been dissolved. So, mm. But I would still call... Them, it's a nation of people. Mm, it's a nation. nation of people yeah. as opposed More to... More respectful, I think. Yeah, of course. It's just, but that's, that's, that's... If you read uh, Ojuku's biography, Omeka mm. Ojuku was leader of the Biafra War, he said, look, 
I see myself first as an Igbo, mm. then as a Nigerian, then as an African. Mm -hmm. And that's how really we should all see ourselves. Except for us who are dual nationals. But anyway. <laughs> you. Uh, long story short, we start thinking oh. about the oh. whole... Fully Nigerian. Oh, sorry. Apart from that Portuguese man that... <laughs> That did what? Wang would his way into your lineage. Into, your, into your lineage. Anyway. He's a Portuguese man on the coast of Africa somewhere in now. So we digress. Continue. Anyway, so we started making us think about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, Igbo was with Igbo. Mm -hmm. uh, Ishakiri was Ishakiri. <clears throat> Rubo was with Rubo. You mean marriage, Yor right? Yoruba was with Yoruba. Mm -hmm. Hausa was with... It was no, like... It wasn't even a debate that mm -hmm. you crossed... Like I didn't know. I don't think I knew anybody who was mixed. Mm. Even though my own parents are not only mixed nationalities, but from two different parts of Africa. My totally. mom is from far away East Africa. My dad is an Iboma. So the, the that's another story in that's, itself. That one is a tale <laughs> in itself. That's so so so, so so even <laughs> even like the whole. I've lost so much weight. It's crazy. Look at my arms. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so even the concept of understanding inter like it's 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 bad enough talking about oh this person is uh in East Africa and this one's in Nigeria. Mm. Just to even talk about this one's an Igbo, this one is a Yoruba was just like mm. like it wasn't even like you just it just didn't happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I started getting older. Actually, when I was like in my teens and I was in Nigeria, like I would I'm, I lived in Lagos. All the fine girls I knew were Yoruba. All of them. I don't know, actually, a couple. But anyway, all the fine girls were Yoruba. Mm. Uh, and in my head at that point, see, I, I remember, this is like early 2000s. This is like 2001, 2002. Then it seemed realistic that it's possible I could be an Igbo boy getting with a But Yoruba you girl. were, you're different though, because you're not fully Igbo. No, my mom, my, my mom, girls my mom were obedient. Look, <laughs> Igbo girls are stubborn. My own impression, <laughs> apparently, my my impression of Igbo people generally. Mm -hmm. I'm being honest with you. I think that's this speak goes, your doesn't, truth. Doesn't matter where you are in the world. Oh yeah, speak. Igbo people's pride and egos mm -hmm. makes them come across like the most arrogant. There's a joke I used to hear when I was a kid. Uh, a thief comes to a Yoruba man's house. Say, so where's your money? Hey! Your money is there, is there, is there, is there, even on that day, it's even there, they go there. Please just don't kill me. And then what House man. Yeah. Where's the money? Well, like, <laughs> the only money I have is there. I can't get the money. <laughs> Meanwhile, he has money all over the house. Igbo man, where's the money? I'm telling you, I don't have any money in this life. <laughs> I don't have anything. Right? Meanwhile. The, the, meanwhile, he's he's covered in containers. The point is this. <laughs> AKA loaded fully. The point is this. <laughs> Igbo people are so, they work so hard to be so um, industrious, mm -hmm. entrepreneurial, and achieve so much because of the dynamic of Niger. They had to. And especially since the Biafra War, which we'll get to, mm -hmm. they felt the need to. Re they were, I mean, they've always been like that. In fact, the first billionaire in Nigeria was Odumegu Ojuku, who was oh, shuttling beads. Ojuku's father, was the oh, first billionaire. Oh, I didn't know that. First, first multi millionaire in Nigeria. Mm. Because they're so enterprising, mm -hmm. they've always they've always had a certain air about them, and it even goes back to ancient days. Igbo people. You, even if you read the book, uh, uh, Life and Times of Gustavus Vlasa, the slave, the person who was enslaved and taken to Europe, I wrote a book in the 18th century. He was Igbo. He's from Igbo land. He used mm -hmm. to talk about how, industri how entrepreneurial the people were mm -hmm. 300 years ago. So this is something which they have. So you think that's why Igbo girls so are I, the way I think, they are? I think, and of course, because of the culture, mm -hmm. the way the women are seen, you know, a Yoruba household, and there are many more groups, by the way, but let's just take the ones you know. In a Yoruba household, the daughter 
the sun, everybody prostrates. Doesn't matter how old you are, you can be a pensioner. Prostrate if somebody is 30 seconds older than you. You prostrate. You know okay, ma. Everybody lives in the same house. It could be nine bedrooms and 36 people, four in a room. Must we balance? Hausa families. Again, Hausa of Fulani, Northern families. Mm -hmm. The typically, maybe if they are Islamic, three, four wives, mm -hmm. eight kids. Every kid is sort of there, 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 and there. Mm -hmm. They know that once everything is over, once they get to 18, they take over everything. The daughter will be married off to the richest man that walks through the house. <laughs> Walks into the house. The richest man. And then Igbo. With Igbo people. Go on. The man turns, at least now anyway. The man turns, the son can be 35. They are still looking for a wife for him. <laughs> and he's like the commodity, right? When the daughter is 16, <laughs> they've married her off to somebody who just, you know, packages himself the best. Right? But that, even that packaging, that man, you see, even people, when you hear all these like evil stories, like, yes, they say, I'm saving to get married. Who saves to get married? Like, as if it's a business, it's saving to buy a house. It's a, a transaction house. now. Saving to buy a house. You, for many people, for like, many people, it's a transaction. They get, that's what I'm saying. they have daughter, they, they're happy to have a daughter because, yes, you know, this is, that's they, they would rather have a son, but if they have a daughter, they will make you pay. Yeah. You yeah. will pay through the nose and you will suffer. <laughs> You know, <laughs> but you but but my parents are different. My family, very no, 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 no. You're, I'm talking of the ones back home. Oh, oh, oh okay, of, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah no. Uh, no, once they've exposed you to Europe, it's they it's, it's very the, different, everything balances, yeah. But what the ones back home, at least when we were growing up, mm. those ones when <laughs> might be different now, yeah, yeah. I mean, we are, I mean, when we are marriage, that when you turn to that marriage age mm -hmm. 21, mm -hmm. so 15 years ago, time, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. The girl is an asset because once she goes, she's gone. You see, in even in Igbo, ancient Igbo culture, when the boy is of a certain age, he goes and builds his own house mm. in the compound. Mm -hmm. He's not staying in the main house. See, there's a thing about them that I must be independent. Yeah. Do you understand? <laughs> because even in the movie, there was one man, they say he was working in a coal mine. He came to ask for Peter Doche of all people. <laughs> His daughter's hand in marriage. <laughs> but you know that guy saved every penny. Of course now, to come to, to come saved and even have the audacity to ask. Igbo man will wear the dirtiest trainers, <laughs> the baggiest jeans, the jeans of a, the 80s, the faded. But he's got money. Don't get but his interested. wife, what they do to their wife, they make sure the wife is looking banging. They put all the money. Because when they marry... It is the status. And you know, when you compare them <laughs> with Yoruba... That's why Beyonce Yoruba, Jay -Z are clearly Igbo, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you look at those main three groups, and there are many more, about 200 of them, but let's just focus on those main three. Igbo ones are the ones who are not that polygamous. They don't tend to marry more than one wife. Some do. Mm -hmm. And that's in part to do with the Catholicism that really came and penetrated Igbo land. The religious mm -hmm. Christianity, we really, we absorbed it past anybody. Mm -hmm. But that's more of a new age thing. Ha. Back in the villa is a different story. So mm -hmm. now the question that we're going to talk about mm -hmm. was why is it that that generation had that issue with the tribal thing? Mm -hmm. And is it and still is relevant? Is it still too? relevant today? Mm -hmm. I've been talking. Go ahead. Your turn. So I remember growing up in a household being told, better not bring you about person homo, mm -hmm. better not to, come on, come on, come on, come on. And it bothered me mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Because, to be honest, the only evil people we were really surrounded by in They're this country cousins. were family members, mm -hmm. cousins, right? So, <laughs> our parents used to take us to this, like, Christmas dinner, which was basically, we realized later that it was for matchmaking purposes. Looking for suitors. For suitors. No suitors. So they would sit people pur purposefully, <laughs> like the parents would have their party upstairs in a, this nice posh hotel, and then the kids would have another room, the kids. So we were like in our teens and then upwards. 
and they would put kids specifically in, on certain tables that they wanted to connect. Because, of course, you know, you can't be related or anywhere. Know. Um, no, um, you, no, you know? That stuff, and yeah. that's the thing. Like, I would always be, like, conscious. Like, am I related to this person? <laughs> like, to be honest, I just, I was never really attracted to Igbo guys. <laughs> like, it's like the rebel inside me always wanted to find a Yoruba guy to be attracted to. <laughs> So when we met, hey, madam, you do wrong. <laughs> so when we met, I had no idea where you were from. I was like, well, you knew. I didn't actually care. No, I didn't. I actually didn't remember. How would I have known? How would I have known? I didn't know it was you that. You didn't ask before you introduced. Ask who? Me. Okay, you didn't know. You I didn't know. Okay. okay. We just met. So I was like, oh, okay. So because you don't look like the typical. To be fair, you don't look like the typical. Igbo guy not at all so whatever that means whatever yeah. that means yeah. but you know there's a look there's yeah. a look there's a huh. <laughs> you know? obina emeka chuma mm, like chukudi imihon so anyway, see i have it i have it so anytime i see it i'm like ah, i have to be related to that guy yeah. i have to be <laughs> and so the rebel in me would always be attracted to your black guys you know and lovely i had you know some lovely lovely relationships but i would always have that thing in the back of my head that oh my god my parents are not gonna be too happy about this mm. this is obviously before we met and it bothered me it really really bothered me because i'm just like this is a really these are suitors you know mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but then i think it's because i didn't know to the extent to, the you know issues the burned, issues burned and to be honest the they were never really explained mm -hmm. so you just tell you oh don't bring this one home more but you're like but why yeah it just seemed very like like that seemed tribal yeah that seemed like oh you're not part of our fraternity and it's just like but it's not until you get older and you, you get realize, older you're like ah Hang on a minute. 1967 yeah then you even before 1967, 1966, they were killing... Because Igbo people, if you know anything about Nigeria's history, traveled before anybody. They were settling in all parts of Nigeria before anybody because they are business people. They're hustlers. And then in this early... First of all, there was a problem in Nigeria when they wanted to become independent. The three different groups, Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo, didn't really want to... They wanted to be separate places, but they... Igbo people say it's not possible. So they have to come together mm -hmm. and form one country. Um, or one one presidency and then prime minister and so on. Um, but soon after independence, they were killing Igbos in the north, killing them, and Igbo people started running back to Igbo land. Which is the southeast. Which is the southeast of mm -hmm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, Igbo people felt marginalized, and didn't feel like they had a share of the cake. The first president of Nigeria was Igbo. And then when there was a coup that removed oh. all the other presidents, Namdi Azikwe from an umbrella oh, like us. Oh, of course. Yes, yes, yes. Um, See, I'm learning too. When, um, and then when when there was a coup that failed, the coup was led by an Igbo man, right. Major Kaduna Nzogu. Uh -huh. Then he, he was overthrown and put in jail. And mm. then immediately after him, the person who settled the peace was yeah. another Igbo man, Agri Ironsi. So the first, hey. in the line of Nigeria, within six years of independence, independence we had three the Igbo presidents, or heads of state, mm -hmm. rather. Mm -hmm. And ever and since then, when it ended, and then all the war ended and everything, mm -hmm. there was not one single Igbo person in power, in power with the exception of Good so Luck Johnson. So were they killed out? Killed off or? No, I mean they were never assume? given the chance. Okay. The be best you got was your uncle, Alex Kweme, who was vice president. Mm -hmm. in, okay. a, in a puppet mm -hmm. government in the 80s but mm -hmm. basically Igbo people with the exception of good luck who is half Igbo mm -hmm. they were never given a chance to be and that's why the Biafra movement is big now it's revitalized but anyway the point is during the war during the war but you have to the Biafra war right Biafra war the 1967, 1967 war, war was yeah. a civil war between the seceded states which is the Igbo states mm -hmm. who decided we're going to become our own country mm -hmm. and they fought the rest of nigeria and the british backed the rest of nigeria that's where we saw blue peter in the uk become a big thing because mm -hmm. the biafran kids and the kwashoko big stomach and that was the that first was... time i found out that 
the Red Cross, Oxfam, all those people, that was the first ever time that they put out those campaigns for, you know, look at these children, they're hungry. That's where it began. That, in the, that's I, the I learned that began. the other day, that's where that money spinner began. And ever since. And, and needless to say, that money never reached those people. Uh, well, I mean, in, in part because it was a blockade, yeah. But okay, also yeah, yeah. in part mm -hmm. because people were really like, with it's only like France and a few other countries that, that recognize Biafra. Biafra. The rest of the people were like Cuba as well. Yeah, Cuba always mm -hmm. uh, Cuba is people. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, so during the war, you see, if you know Nigeria, you hear these NSARS. This thing is not today. Mm. Even people that were fa found that found themselves in territories that were part of the Federal Republic during the war were slaughtered. Mm -hmm. What was Igbo land? I think at the time the capital was Enugu, one of the states, mm -hmm. one of the states, city states. Then following week, it moved to Oweri because they are taking Enugu. Following mm -hmm. week, it moved to another place. You understand? So anybody who was caught there was then ended up getting slaughtered, killed. You know, it was, it was, Pretty brutal, brutal. Mm. and all our parents. Yeah, our parents were part of the. My dad yeah. is born in thirty five. Your dad is born in so well, put, the forties. So they were in their so like they were teens, or... at least in their twenties and thirties. Your dad was in his, you know, probably twenties. Wow, like they were. At, my dad was in his thirties, so mm. they were grown people during this time. Mm. So they saw it well. Your mom even her schooling was interfered. Mm -hmm. So when you, you know? when you see it from that point of view, you kind of understand it. You get it. You kind of understand you because it. even mm. when the war ended, mm -hmm. you could have been a billionaire in Lagos. Mm -hmm. They had this thing it. called 20 pounds. They gave everybody 20, 20 pounds. Hey. Imagine you are worth a million. They just cleared your, as so evening. a lot of people had to start from scratch. Mm. Even in the case of Ojuku's dad, who was a multi-millionaire, pretty much lost most of it. He's luckily he had properties and things like that in the east, mm. you know. But they all of them had to start from scratch. So with all that, so you feel the bitterness yeah. mm -hmm. from uh, people who say, "Ah," because it's ironic. Because immediately after the war, Igbo people still went back to the north, like mm. in Hausa land. Now a lot of Igbo people are there. The market some of them are, are the, there. They're the first and generation. The, oh, sorry, they 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 don't even know the East. Exactly. So they were also born in the first, North. Like, they speak yeah. Hausa and Igbo, mm. but they don't really know their place like that. Mm. And we have friends like that too. Mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. So, in situations like that, you have to be like, I feel I understand. There's a palpable frustration mm. whenever you me we mention. Or the possibility of marrying this person from that place or this person mm -hmm. from that place, purely because there is that you can remember what mm -hmm. people from that group said mm -hmm. and did mm -hmm. to make your life more difficult. Yeah, totally. I get it. I mean, yeah. not saying that I have those opinions. I don't. I don't. But should you? Should you? Should you? And is there? Do you, like clearly there are more marriages happening into into whatever. Right, internationality. Inter internationality. Yeah, but should you still carry those frustrations over, knowing the way Nigeria is and the potential that mm. at any time things could anything blow could up? pop off? No, I don't think it's necessary because honestly. my child came home and said mom this is you know i found this person i love them and you know this is my forever partner who am i to interfere absolutely at the end of the day am i going home with them mm -hmm. and i can think that way now because i haven't been through what our parents went through i mm -hmm. get it like it's it's the equivalent of somebody for instance who lives in say you know iraq for goodness sakes you know that's more closer to home in, like in terms of closer in history mm. you know look what happened in their recent history or even like is uh, palestinian and Israel. yes yeah. oh lord that one that you can't even mention yeah i mean it's with, the equivalent like of me like it's being from it's, it's similar, similar, similar like yeah. being a palestinian and then my daughter comes home but I can understand if a Palestinian someone... dad saying, look, you want to marry an Israeli? And they'll be like, hell, hell to the no. no. I get that one. 
Because yeah, you, you'll never be accepted. I get that one. That kind, that kind of love. Which kind of love? Mm -hmm. Which kind of dirty love when they're being killed left, right, and center? Yeah. You know, that's that's in the now. But I'm just saying, it's so funny how you just grow up and just get, you just mature. You're like, you know what? I get it totally. Yeah. Because, it, you know, it went for me. Like I said, I only ever really met and dated you and my guys in the past not on purpose but it just well, kind of yeah, happened yeah in london now i'm so in it's, london it's, it's your bad I, boys you see my dear as in there's no was... one there's no one estate that doesn't have the name <laughs> ayo it's not one estate in this london i never dated an ayo anyway it doesn't matter you ask it, whoever you dated their cousin is ayo i <laughs> bet you any anything but do you know what but, i think that you know what the arrogance about the evil people that you're talking about i think that's also what i didn't like yeah about evil guys because they were I, you know this is a massive generalization so don't at me okay <laughs> but you meet some evil guys and it's like mm, like you they want you to be happy that they're even paying you attention because that's how they've been brought up like they yeah. are you know yeah, the sons of commodities so, yeah like there, there are a few of us so you know yeah. we can do what we with, with it we are it mm -hmm. So take us, you know, and I just never liked that. Well, your bad, your that. Your boys, your bad boys had more swag too. Swag. Your bad people, your bad people take life less Swagger. seriously than evil people. You know. Sorry, no, no. Yeah, that's just that's a just fact. My that's just a fact. You know, it's just so, like your bad people, probably the most copied people in Nigeria, yeah. in Africa. Yeah. Most copied your bad yeah. people. Period. From. From their weddings, the way they do their wedding, my dear. their music, my dear, you know, their uh, uh, the Owan Bear, all the, the party, all the most know, popular everything. artists, where they from? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's just that's just it. But I was going to say something before mm -hmm. we round up. Mm -hmm. um, something about uh, yes, so we don't feel the need to do it me personally i'm a pan-african i recognize that it doesn't matter where in africa you're from mm -hmm. excuse me i'm fiddling with my mic mm -hmm. wherever in africa we're from we have all faced the same issues relating to white supremacy mm -hmm. it doesn't matter whether we're africans in the caribbean or in america mm -hmm. we've all faced the same issues i think ultimately um, us even just sticking to, together is uh, is is, is amazing, right? Mm. That said, though, there is something about continuity of culture, mm. i.e., me and you just happen to be yeah, from that the just same happened. place. That's yeah. just that's not a, that's a one in a million shot, <laughs> especially you for feel me. me? <laughs> no, no, there's a one in a million shot, yeah. right? And uh, even your siblings, you know. Mm -hmm. Your sibling married and a fellow Igbo person. These are not things that you, if you're open minded about whoever you can marry, mm -hmm. it's very unlikely you end up, you like, you wouldn't think you marry somebody from your place. Anyway, mm -hmm. and we're like a few miles away from each other in terms of where my father's place is and her father's place. But the point I'm making is this we, there is something about cultural continuity. You being able to speak the same language as somebody. Mm, that's a plus. You being able to share similar culture to you, with your children. Um, you know, and um, also be able to, you know, just let... There are certain conversations that don't need to be had or disagreements that won't mm. need to be had mm -hmm. purely because you all come from, you know, the same, same place. place and think the same way. Mm -hmm. So, you know... That hurdle of Peter Doce, that movie, where the mom was like, she's Yoruba. Forget even that she's Yoruba, she's called Tukumbo. Meaning she's second <laughs> she just hand. Had, she just heard the name, I was like, ah. You know, like that is just... That's just... A, <laughs> you know? So I think... Uh, it's, 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 it's ultimately, ultimately, <laughs> African people, if you meet a fellow African person from anywhere in Africa, it's not a bad thing. But again, if you live in the West, mm. in the West, it's even just good that you meet an African person that you fall in love with. That's just good. Mm -hmm. But I think if you're someone who has a connection back home, there's nothing wrong in maintaining. Igbo, for example, they say mm. it's the fastest dying language in West Africa. The fastest dying. Wow. In other words, like although, you and I are not fluent speakers. Although... 
there well, as much as I, I i it's so funny how you grow older and you start having you know these opinions as much as i like i agree with what you're saying i met uh, an interesting um client who mm. just happened to be half Igbo and half um i don't remember where she was from oh yeah I shona from zimbabwe it's from zimbabwe she speaks shona and when for me and even for you as well like you're half east african half west african Igbo and yeah, and um, tutsi. tutsi so when you have those mixed heritages it's it's a beautiful mm -hmm. concoction when mm -hmm. both people are aware people are, are intentional mm -hmm. about educating their kids about mm -hmm. those yeah. Yeah. massive you know yeah. cultures like yeah, this this um my client i met amazing like you met like i met her i was just you know when you just assume so she sounds very like british but then she started going into her background she's like yeah every single year they either went home to the east they didn't even go to to lagos or straight to the east flew to enugu and then drove to wherever they were from they drove to Apiamwe. and this is not today or every single year mm -hmm. and they were half Zim Zim half Igbo and then is every other uh, they went to the east or they went to 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 Zim mm. and they went to their village there mm. so and they, and then what they were planning what was really beautiful um they're all she's the think three siblings and mm. they're all married now with their own kids mm. uh married to I think two married to British people and then one and she was married to yeah she was also married Only to both British yeah and but they've taken the time to educate about both sides so they actually plan to take all six of the grandchildren mm -hmm. home they and they do that every single year and i'm like you know what that's intention that that's that kind of intentional behavior yeah, for, her, for her i mean because she she had two very rich cultures that yeah she, and parents were clearly very clear that yeah I want you to know to enough know. of them. Because and it doesn't not, happen But that's enough. not easy, though. It's not. Like, but this is what I mean. People are just from the same place yeah. in Congo My to dear. take their kids home 20 years later. You know? It's it's, it's not simple. My dear, to even know. know the language. My dear. We're still, like, we're having to take it. Thankfully, I, I we, we picked things up from our our parents speaking but to even mm. learn the language or teach the kids the language yeah and the culture because you see language and culture once you learn the language is one thing mm -hmm. i think many no disrespect many people who speak these languages mm -hmm. know the language and not really the culture in yeah. terms of because you see religion has played a serious part in us like severing ties with the culture Mm -hmm. When I say culture, I don't mean, oh, this is what we do on a wedding. Mm -hmm. I mean the culture, why we do it. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, if you can start tapping into the language, the language is a gateway to understanding the culture, but also knowing the why is very important. And mm -hmm. I think uh, that's what we're doing a lot of now. You know, I know for right. my part, that's what I'm really trying to tap in. But I have two different sides that I want to explore. Because mm. we still have to do that. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot. Anyway, it's so that's lot. it. Anything else you want to say? Some parting words? Um, can I see the seed? That's all? That's all. That's interesting. Okay, thank you very much for tuning in. <laughs> thought we'd keep this brief with y'all. Um, take care of yourself. And each other. Get out of here, man. Shit, I'm saying. <laughs>